Hi, I'm Bill Deputy with BestBeginnerPiano.com. Today, we're interviewing my teacher, pianist-composer Jennifer Nicole Campbell. Jennifer's music has been performed by numerous prominent artists. Her Piano Trio No. 1 received its premier performance by members of the Philadelphia Orchestra in 2007. Jennifer's music has won the MTNA Composition Competitions in both Delaware and Pennsylvania, and her solo piano works have been premiered throughout the United States, including halls at the University of Miami, the University of Buffalo, Canisius College, and the Peabody Conservatory. Her works have been featured on recordings including the Winter Estates Garden Fair CD, the Sacred Music album Pierre Natus, and her most recent album Perceptions of Shadows is available on her website, jennifernicolecampbell.com. She also runs a thriving private piano and composition studio in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. She teaches all ages and skill levels. Thank you, Jennifer, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do a composer interview. My pleasure. When did you first consider yourself to be a composer? I think I started composing around the same time I started piano, which was around eight years old. Um, so I had always had an interest and fascination with composing, even, even in that early age, yeah. Do you remember your first song or composition? My first piece, I remember very vividly, was called The Racing Frog. It was just for right hand. I think it was within five fingers or something, maybe two lines. And I remember I spelled the word racing wrong on the, on the manuscript. I think I still have that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where did you come up with that title? I have no idea. Maybe from the video game Frogger. That was big in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Do you write your music down or save it another way? I do uh, try to write it down. I use a music notation software. Uh, sometimes if I'm you know, out walking or something and I get some kind of inspirational idea, I will just write it down on paper. I try to keep manuscript paper with me sometimes. Um, but often I'll, if I have a moment of inspiration and I'm in between students or on the run or uh, need to go somewhere, I will just put on the voice memos app and just play. And then I'll come back to that later. And sometimes I'll say, well, that wasn't a very good idea. <laughs> And then uh, other times I said, well, I'll take that idea and then I'll kind of run with it. So I do have a lot of um, a lot of content that I haven't put out into uh, onto a score yet, which you know might be a good project of mine. Have you written music for other instruments besides piano? I have. Yeah, I've written music for violin and piano. I think that was sort of my first um, exploration outside of just piano. I've written for uh, orchestra, piano and orchestra. I'd say the most unusual group I've written for uh, was actually commissioned by Melomony, and it was um, they're baroque. They do baroque music, and they do commissions for new composers. And um, it was for viola da gamba and flute, harpsichord, uh, rain stick, and um, and violins. So it was quite quite a combination. It was fun. And you also play violin. Yes, yeah, I do play violin, yeah, and I also have a few obscure instruments as well. I, I used to play bagpipes every once in a while, I'll take those out, and I've got a steel drum. It's sort of a, I've got a whole wide variety of instruments. I dabble with the cello, but uh, don't ask me to play that today. <laughs> <laughs> have you written anything just for the violin? I've started to write some things just for violin, but I always find it difficult, I think, because piano, in my world, I love having all the sonorities and the colors of all the chords. I find it particularly difficult um, to write for solo violin. Yeah, I've tried. Have you collaborated with any other art forms? I have, yeah. Actually, um, I was um, a composer in residence with the Academy of International Ballet, and we did um, some collaborations with the, uh, the young ballet dancers, which was fantastic. I really enjoyed that kind of working with movement and music was especially inspiring to me. Um, and I did run a, uh, a workshop for young composers at the Brainy One River Museum where I asked them to pick out a painting in the museum and write a piece of music based off of that painting. And it was, I think it was fascinating just to see what they came up with. So I, I really do think all the art forms kind of nurture each other and it's always something I've, I've been interested in. Do you have an organized composing schedule? I do not. I wish I did. Um, I think uh, 
sometimes the summer is a good time for trying to, okay, first thing I do in the morning, try to you know, get up and write down something. I, I think um, there's a there's a tradition or, or at least a rumor that Stravinsky used to write down melodies every day and used to toss most of them. That might be a good exercise to do just to kind of get the creative juices flowing. And so maybe I'll try that. But I don't have a organized schedule. I find at least especially during the school year with all my students and everything, it's hard to find time to just say, okay, every day you're going to do this. I think though with anything, consistency is important. So that's one of the things I need to do better at. <laughs> Once you started, were there times in your life when you were not composing? Uh, yeah, my first year actually at Peabody Conservatory, uh, because I wasn't uh, explicitly studying composition, it was very, you know, I my degree in piano performance, so I was very focused on practice and I was you know, enjoying the excitement of my first year at, at Peabody. Uh, and then I felt like something was missing, so I started taking lessons my second year at Peabody. And I found that I felt much more fulfilled. I didn't really know that that part of me was kind of missing. Um, so I found that having lessons were re a really good kind of checkpoint or something to work towards. I think, especially for, for me as a composer anyway, I really need those uh, those checkpoints or kind of goals to look forward to, to have something uh, ahead of me, you know, to prepare for. Why do you keep writing music? I think that's a great question. Maybe that answer changes uh, uh, in different seasons of life, maybe, but uh, I find that a lot of things I've written are based off of experiences I've had or maybe people. Um, I think it's sort of, uh, there's a bigger question there too, maybe why even art, right, to begin with. Why why do people paint? Why do people uh, dance or, in, a, in, this, in this case, compose? And I think um, the purpose of art really should be to, to uplift um, with so much uh, you know, distress and anxiety going on in the world. I think music has the capability to really uh, shine a light on the good, you know, the good, the good things, the the true things, the beautiful things. And I think if art can do that, you know, that's a wonderful thing. That's definitely my goal. Um, whether I always reach that, I don't know, but that's a good a good goal I think to have. So I try to do that not just with composing, but when I perform as well. Um, sometimes I find performing easier because there's a little less pressure. You know, what if they don't like my composition? You know, so. Uh, you can't go wrong with Beethoven or something, so. <laughs> what do you consider the best thing that you've written so far? I wrote a composition uh, called The Four Seasons of Delaware County. It sort of stole that uh, title, Four Seasons, from Vivaldi, but it was actually my publicist at the time, Bill Conville, was his idea. And um, it was a piece that I, I would travel around different locations in Delaware County, you know, historical locations. One was based off of the Brandywine Battlefield, and I wrote a piece inspired by that. So there are four different scenes of places throughout the county. And I really enjoyed uh, performing that and composing it. Uh, I tried to really uh, delve into history, and that's, I guess, it's not an art form per se, but I enjoyed uh, that aspect of composing that piece. And I do, I have a set of variations um, on Amazing Grace that I think audiences really enjoy and they seem to have a lot of fun listening to it. So that might be another piece that I would consider a, a favorite um, if I were to choose. <laughs> Before we let you go, could you play something for us? Well, I was, I was just mentioning that a set of variations on Amazing Grace. I won't play the whole thing, but the, the last uh, variation is a combination of uh, Rhapsody in Blue and the theme of Amazing Grace. So let's see if you can pick that out. Passion for music and creative excellence in all that you do is truly inspiring. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. Absolutely, my pleasure.